right, so I'm going to give you a tour of our homeschool room and kind of give you a little insight to how we work all that here in our home. This house was built with a small office on the second floor, and that's where we tried to do our homeschool. Um, and uh, fortunately, the room was built with uh, two built-in bookcases. So I think I'll just start at one um, right inside the door here and just explain to you how I have this set up. So this is kind of like our, uh, our various tools that we use. You can see I have things labeled up high there. Um, and then as we come down the second shelf, I have different um, paints and glues and glitter. And then the third shelf there is my printer paper and our cardstock and our construction paper and our clipboards. This is a small basket that I keep a lighter in up where the little children can't reach it because I like to light a candle. A lot of times while we do school or sometimes I'll do essential oils. I just like, <coughs> excuse me, something a little out of special. And then I've got dry erase markers here. Um, as we continue down, just more little tools, paper punches, markers and crayons, uh, printer, printer ink, some extra three ring binders. These, I like to hold on to these. You probably get them in the mail. They are like um, flower, vegetable, plant, little catalogs you get in this thing. This is a Bridges. They're excellent for science when you have to make collages about different things. And um, I've got National Geographics because we use those a good bit to look through and cut things out. We're talking about different types of animals and ecosystems. And then down below here, this bookshelf has a cover and I just have more things stored here. Again, they're in uh, bins and they're labeled. Just all sorts of stuff that we use. And then I have a trash can. Can't live without that. This pink bin here, um, I got this at a thrift store. It was really vintagey looking and I decided to spray paint it neon pink. <laughs> so this we use for our book basket um, depending on what we're learning about, we get different books uh, that kind of coincide from the library. They go in here, and then each day, um, my children in second through eighth grade will read through some of those for like 15 to 20 minutes. This is just a little bin of toys I have in case I wind up with a younger child in here, so I can give them that bin. And down below here, I have a wild box that has various younger children workbooks. I have a little monthly calendar, which I do put the month on. We talk about the date a little bit, what's going on that week, special things. I don't put every event on this calendar, but like if we're going to have like something special that affects school, I will put it on here. Um, and then there's just a bulletin board that we use to hang up things as kids create them throughout the year. And then this here is my desk. Now I am not in here the entire time we do school. Um, I try to be in here a good bit of time, but it is difficult with younger children. Um, a lot of times I'll try to get them onto their ind independent work. You know, I'll do the stuff that requires instruction, and then I'll move on. Um, and I can I can do other things, or sometimes I kind of come in and come out. Um, here is my collection of timers. We use a lot of timers with school. Yeah, and then over here. I'm just going to sit down on my desk and explain some of this to you. So in my desk, this drawer here is all of like the handouts that I need to give my children throughout the year. 
and also where I keep like my test score sheets and my attendance sheets. Um, so you can see this says tests and then I've got portfolio items. So that's like from field trips or places we might go, things that I'll tuck into their portfolios. In the state of Pennsylvania, we have to submit a portfolio for evaluation. So we went to this special uh, Fort Loudon days and we also went to Lake Tobias this summer, which is like a small zoo. So these things I will put in the portfolios because they are educational things. Here's where I keep the test scores. Hymns. These are all the hymns that we will learn and sing this year. And um, we'll read the stories about them and so on. I have them all printed out and ready. I like to do that because it makes the school year a little easier. There is art things that we will do. Fast facts, which is a math fact practice that my kind of like mid-elementary school kids do every year. And then here I have a couple places for completed tests. Uh, school days, this is how we track our attendance and keep those in there. Um, some student sheets that come along with the curriculum that we'll be using. Uh, this is story of the world activity sheets that we will be using, all printed out already. Some timeline sheets, more timeline pieces, um, and, and some handwriting. So, and then I keep some wide ruled and colored ruled paper in here because um, I have children using different different papers. Some tracing paper up here. So that is all very homeschool oriented. And then this drawer right here has all of my teacher stuff. So I've got my teacher book from the math. I've got, you know, the activity book for story of the world. I have my lesson plans. Um, we've used my father's world curriculum this year, uh, the second through eighth grade are on 1850 to modern times. You kind of start at the beginning of creation and it's a five year series. Um, this is the last in the, in the series. And then you just kind of start over again. Um, thinking, you know, the children that were young, when they had it the first time, they'll, they'll pick up on more the second time around. And then my older son, who's in ninth grade, is doing ancient history and literature, my father's world. And so I just have all of my teacher stuff in here. And then, this is a new addition this year. It seems like every year I add a little something. And this year I added this cart because I struggled with where to have my CD player. And I wanted it on something I could kind of roll in and roll out. We do use this a good bit. We do some audiobooks and some sound recordings of different things just to free me up from reading out loud so much. And so we'll play things here. I got this cart on Amazon. I wanted a cart like this, but I wanted one with a table on top so that I could set things on top and still have some storage inside and then I've just got a few things stored here I've got wipes for cleaning up you know from art projects and things like that pencil sharpener this is my scale for weighing things when I mail them I have a power strip here so I can kind of wheel things out a little and then a couple of different sizes of bubble mailers there and if you see back in this corner, this is not homeschool related at all, so I will kind of skip over it, but it is a eyesore. This is like the boxes I reuse for shipping things on eBay and just some more um, shipping supplies there. So then we come to the second built-in bookcase, and this is where I store my curriculum. So I do have a rhyme and a reason to kind of how it, how it is arranged. Um, if you look up here, you can see I have sciences, 
tips or various, sci various science that we will revolve back through. And then just some reference science type of books. Um, I've got some social studies, uh, history, like world studies, some Spanish, an art, some art items. And then as you move over here, I've got more of history. And we just kind of go on, go on, go on. And then we move into spelling. And then um, kind of biblical world studies. And then these are all different books that we use as part of our studying. These are books that I'll either read aloud or have read aloud or the children will read. And then over here I have, this is just all various writing things, handwriting things. These are literary studies. These are English programs, math, all the Singapore math, uh, Saxon math, and other years of the curriculum. So this is the first year, I think, should be. I think this was my favorite. I loved doing this one. I have enjoyed them all. No, that's Rome to the Referee. From ugh, Rome to the Reformation. No, where is it? <laughs> it's the very last one you pull out, of course. There we go. Exploring countries and cultures. That's the first year in my father's world. It's kind of a um like a family program. This is you can use for second through eighth grade. And it's kind of tweaked for the ages, but um, everybody does the same thing. It's just so cool. You just kind of immerse yourself in the different countries and cultures that you're learning about. And while you're learning about them, you're learning their art, you're learning their biomes, you're cooking their recipes, you're reading stories from their countries. And it's such a cool way to learn. And that's how the entire curriculum is. Okay, so there's my little plug about that. Um, and then just some more books we have. This is a reward system I designed last year that worked out pretty well. Some manipulatives, um, different things for spelling power when we're using spelling power. A blow up globe, just to give us perspective on how a country's size is kind of distorted when it's turned to a map. And then the various CDs we use and we have used and um, all the different classical composers we've learned about and their music, just a bunch of stuff. Now this shelf here, I keep things that I will use with my younger children with the curriculum. And then this shelf here, is stuff my high school child will be using. And actually, I've got to put this back over here this belongs right here because I found when he kept things in his desk they really got banged up um, and so we decided a shelf was better and then everybody's younger children use the children's dictionary older children use the adult dictionary of course we have a thesaurus um, we have a rhyming word dictionary which is unique if you've never seen one of those and then I've got more books that we use, um, some headphones, because we do use those if someone's listening to something on the computer, we'll put headphones in. And also we have some science tools in here. These are early readers. And then we have, this is kind of my own personal bookshelf portion right here, and some extra notebook paper. And then more, um, more books we've read for school, more just various things that I use for school, various things I use for the kids. We, we've did these for a while. Kind of a neat idea. And then I've got some younger children books here on this shelf for my younger kids. If I happen to have them in here or if I work these into a lesson somehow. And then we have just coloring stuff down here. 
And then these books here are all um, award-winning books. Just there's two, two layers of them there. This is sand for spelling power. If you've ever used spelling power, you know all about that. And then the timelines we'll be using this year. And then here, now this doesn't really pertain to homeschool, but this is part of my room. This is all different kinds of neat paper, like scrapbooking paper and just arts and craft paper that the kids are allowed to get into and make things with. And then we come to this desk. Now this desk is under repair, as you can see. And we are ready. So these will be in the middle desk drawer. And then um, he will have his various pencils and, you know, stuff like that in there. This is my high school child and he is going to keep his like notebooks in his desk. The actual books that we will reuse are going to stay on the shelf for longevity purposes. The style of the stack of books here is just something I need to get out of the way. And then we keep, we both my children have this in their, both of my school age children have this in their desk. This is just scratch paper, paper we've used one side of we will use the other side, but um, works out pretty well. And then all of their different supplies, their crayons, their markers, their colored pencils, just all that stuff. And of course, we always have the United States map up. We always have the world map, large maps. And uh, we do refer to these a good bit. Anytime we talk about a place, a country, um, body of water, whatever, we try to find it on the map because I just think it's so good for kids to make that connection. And we have manuscript and contemporary cursive. There's so many types of cursive. Um, and then now both children did have a lamp on their desk. We had some problems <laughs> with the one, so we, we removed it for the time being. I'm not sure if I should bring it back this year or not. And then this is my elementary school student's desk and you can see things are kind of set up here. She's got her scissors and her ruler and these are uh, multiplication flashcards. And we are all ready to go with her notebooks and so on. Her art supplies. Both of my kids this year are going to get a really nice set of um, colored pencils. So we always do a couple new little things each year. And then here, that's just bubble wrap. That's part of my <laughs> supplies for mailing things. And then here is a white erase board and I have written kind of an update for the kids so they understand when we're going to school. Um, I don't use this every day, but sometimes, you know, if they don't know how to spell a word, I'll write it up there so they can visually see it, not just hear it. Um, you know, I use it for different things. Um, and then I have the United States Pledge of Allegiance. I realized that, um, you see, I went to public school and I knew that Pledge of Allegiance because we did it every single day in school. And I realized my children did not know it. Uh, my son went to a Christian school and they did not do the Pledge of Allegiance the first few years. And then my daughter just didn't do it. We also have the Christian Pledge. So we do review these and talk about these and practice these periodically because I think it's important for everyone to know. Um, so that's just something that we keep here. I've had this here for years and and we do do it sometimes, not all the times. So I think that pretty much sums it up. This is our little room. Now a lot of times my high schooler will do some work in his bedroom. He does have a um, a desk in his room too. Or other times, you know, um, the kids might do a little work in the car with a clipboard. 
you know, it, it varies, but I do try to give them a nice quiet place that is their very own that they can, you know, work on and focus on things. And, um, so this is just what we have that we use and it has worked well for us. We have only, this is our, uh, I guess we've been homeschooling in this room for like, we did one full school year and then we also did like maybe two and a half months when we first moved here, the year we moved here. Before that, we had converted part of our basement into a school room and it was kind of like a, a cool utility-ish room. We got used cupboards from um, somebody and we got countertop and we just made like areas that were kind of desk like areas and it was just a great zone kind of the same thing there was three workstations there was all kinds of cupboards and counter space and um it just worked out really well so we made that work i know some people do you know maybe use their dining room or some people use their kitchen um, and different things work for different people and different things work at different seasons. So, you know, it's all what works for you. Now, it would be great um, if I had all those old cupboards that I had in my basement at my old house because storage was much easier. I noticed that. I loved this room and I loved the build-ins. And I'm thankful to have a little office that we can use, a homeschool room. But I really did miss all those cupboards. And you can kind of see that storage is a little bit of an issue, even with the desks and even with the bookshelves. Um, you know, I've got things kind of, I feel like really squished in, you know. Um, so... You know, it is what it is. This is just brown paper. If a box is really marked up, I'll wrap it in the brown paper before I send something. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this little tour and the ideas I have and the organizational techniques I use, whether they're good or bad. Um, I think it's always helpful to see what different people do and, you know, just to give yourself ideas of what could work for you, what you could do. Um, in your own homeschool area. I'll talk to you later.